Hi, I'm Kat and you're listening to Cat Tales. Now the backwaters of North Norfolk are not usually the place where you'd expect to see an ex-member of the Sex Pistols, one of the most rebellious bands of our time. But there, at the Vowood Festival near Holt for one night only, was bassist Glenn Matlock. He was performing with his band The Philistines. I was fortunate enough to spend an evening in his delightful company. Not the most conventional of interviews, we shared a few laughs and Glenn showed me the more impish side of his personality. It was absolutely great. This is the one with Glenn Matlock. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. testing, testing. testing, testing. testing. Glenn, do your nose rather than mine, because I need you rather than me. Right, this okay. is Glenn Matlock speaking. That's me, no. From the grounds of Overwood House. Yes, a nice house too, isn't it? Yes, Bank Holiday Sunday. Yeah. It? Well, it's not Bank Holiday, it's a Sunday. Yeah. But preceding but the Bank, Bank Holiday, Holiday Monday. Monday. You're absolutely right. It's my birthday, actually. Is it now? Yeah. How old will you be? Guess. Oh, God, I remember guessing. Oh, I would say, let's think about this. I'm going back from when I'm... Uh, I'll give fif- you a, a, 50. 50? Yeah. I like it. Is that alright? Is that yeah, that right? That'll do. Blind, f- blind 50. Five or blind 50. Give us any number. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what is a man like you doing a place like this? Well, one? I've known Simon for a long time. James is, James got married here. James had a terrorist. You'd be yeah. saying. And Elizabeth, his lovely wife. Yeah. And um, he's invited us to do it last year and we had a giggle. And we're doing it again this year. Because you're here with Adam Ant, weren't you, last year? Well, I was here and Adam was here, here and Adam and turned up without his band. Did, and did, I don't think Simon's too happy, so we kind of sort of bailed him out a little bit. Bailed him out a bit, oh, bless him. Because he's been um, sort of back on the, on the circuit, hasn't he? Bit yeah, after, yeah, a bit yeah I think he was just feeling his way the year ago. So that's that kind of really. So yeah. often I've got this band and we sort of do what comes up very well to do it. Yeah. So where have you been so far this year? Because you've been doing well, a bit, we haven't, haven't, been, haven't been doing a lot with this particular lineup, but there's all sort of various offshoots of the band. Um, I did a thing with James and um, Hugh Cornwall and Clem Burke from Blondie mm. at the start of the year. We did a tour of America, and then I went back again. Me and James got this other project, the International Swingers, with Clem and James and this other guy called Gary Twin, who sings most of the songs. He's a proper singer. Makes me sick. <laughs> what <you> like? <laughs> and I did that for a laugh, and I do a few acoustic shows, and I'm writing some songs. But we've all been busy. And Jim, who plays bass with me, he's actually produced the last album we put out called Born Runner. But he, he's a stereophonics sort of engineer yeah, producer. Yeah, he's telling us about that. He's just been doing a new album, which is yeah. coming out soonish. So you've got good people around you then. Yeah, I think everybody's of a certain calibre, but we're all mates and all, you know. Yeah. So that's half of what it's about. Then, it's isn't kind it, of. Really? I think I'd like to be playing more with this, but. Um, I'm not the most organised. No, never. I'm not the most organised. Yeah. Right, supposed to meet you at five o'clock. It's half past six. Uh, yeah. Seven, half past seven. Is yeah. it worse? <laughs> so, right. Everybody's always going to talk about sex pistols, aren't they? Because that's where. Well, that's what you're about to. No, no. Well, I wasn't going to actually. I wasn't going to because I was going to say, it, does that really piss you off? No, I I can understand why people do it. Um, but it's a double-edged sword. Mm-hmm. It's something I did, but it was a long time ago. And I, yeah. Above all, I see myself as a songwriter. Yeah. Right? I think if you can write songs, you don't suddenly stop being able to do it. Mm. Um, and also, you live a bit more life, mm. and you got more to write songs about. Yeah. Which is what this yeah. kind of project's about, really. Yeah. But, on the other, yeah. but on the other hand, you're not as young as you used to, and they don't necessarily want to put beat you up as hunk of the month and <laughs> smash it if it's the lick. I was once, you know. Were you now? <laughs> I just still got it. I still got it. And the funny thing is, is that there's a picture of me, and I'm doing that thing. I'm really young, I was about 23, but I'm reading a book, and the book I'm actually reading is Andre Preston's Manifestos of Surrealism. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you hear at the Literary Festival, isn't it? <laughs> well, I wrote a book once. I read one. And I, I read one, yeah. Just one, just one, that's all. So there's quite a few years in between then and now then, so what have you been well, up to? Well, I've always been doing ducking and diving. Last year I was playing with my all-time favourite band, The Faces. Now, I knew that you liked them. Did that, and it's the band I used to stand in front of the mirror with a tennis racket pretending I was a bass player who suddenly is no longer with us. So I did that. And now, did that feel like you come to be one of your heroes? I mean, you know... Uh, yeah, really but, got... yeah, but I think I brought something to the table because I think yeah, I was the right bloke for the job, you know. Yeah, yeah. Of, I mean, to me, the, the common ground when I met Steve and Paul, they was looking for a bass player before it was the Sex Pistols, and they said, what band do you like? And I said, well, I like the faces. And I said, so do we. So it was a oh, common ground. So right. there's a real big link, you know. Yeah, yeah. And Mark, John hated them, but, yep. you know. No taste. Yeah. Um, but there you go. 
But so we didn't do that many shows. I thought there was going to be more, but we did. The last one I did, we had Line the Fuji Festival in Japan. Oh right. John was sort of moaning that I was doing that, but he won't have Line the Fuji Festival in Japan. Yeah, no, 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 no. Up yours and all that. <laughs> well, you might say that, but I couldn't possibly. You couldn't possibly comment. No, you couldn't possibly comment. Yeah. So, do, so you get, do you still do you get still get on well with the the old band, or how does it all? I haven't seen John since the last show we did. I see Steve once in a blue moon. I see Paul once. In, anyway, last time, no, I, did, I went to see his daughter play Holly Cook. She's got a good reggae band going. Mm. Paul is alone. Steve and John live in the states, so it's not yeah. I'll look up Steve. Won't necessarily yeah. see John. I see him from around. Yeah. Yeah. That's Does fine. You know, you get, in right, bands, you don't have to be the best of mates all the time. Oh God, no. It's nice if you yeah. are, but sometimes the friction. Gives yeah. it an edge which is what we had with the pistols, but it's a long time ago. It is a long time ago, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. The music business has changed quite a bit as well, hasn't it, really? I've, so I've been told. I've never yeah, really felt really part of the music really business. I think not? there's musicians and there's a the music yeah. business. Yeah, yeah. And then there's successful musicians who can kind of deal with it, and I kind of, oh, yeah, all right. Now. Yeah, yeah. But I get, you know, I get by fine. So. Well, it's hardly a business anymore, though, is it, really? I mean, we were chatting about this earlier how, you know, things have changed, and before, in the old and good old days, you know, there was, you know, backing of record labels and all that sort of stuff. Well, I think there still is for young, some younger bands, yeah. but I think the number of bands that they put money in to see them through and help them grow is getting less and less and less, and mm. I think it's, I think the choice is becoming yeah. less. But then that enables, which I think Vogue is part of really, is that people who aren't necessarily big mainstream players, you know, with the internet and gatherings like this yeah. and alternative things, it's kind of... Mm. Almost back to all the independent label kind mm. of things, and mm. then they get bigger, and then it all becomes yeah. the same thing all over again. Yeah, so probably it's, would. A, it's a cyclical thing. Life Where I fit in with that, I don't know. <laughs> I kind of like to think I'm sitting in a chair watching with a cup of tea and a cigarette. Oh, yes, I quite like that idea. Be slippers on, well, <laughs> not quite slippers. Slippery, <laughs> yeah. Drinking in one hand, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, what's the gig going to be like tonight then? Um, I've heard it's obviously it's going to be, it's it's gonna be great, awesome. yeah. Yeah, well. You know, we're a rock and roll band, really. A rock and roll band, play some punk songs. Something old, something new, something borrowed, mm-hmm. something a little bit bluesy is always kind of yeah. good maxim. Yeah. If I went to see Bowie and he didn't play Heroes, I would come away myth. So I know people want to hear certain yeah, songs. Yeah, this is it, isn't it, really? But the thing, most of the songs we do tonight are stuff that I wrote, either by myself or with other people. So there's a continuity in it. I think all the songs kind of dovetail into each other. Yeah. No matter what period they're from. Yeah. And I think if I did another album, I don't think I've changed much over the years. I think people have copied what I did a long time ago, and it's still, it's still a common currency, but I thought yeah. I'd call my album SOS if I make a new one. Oh, really? And you ask me what SOS stands for. I was going to back tell me, obviously, not save ourselves, go on then. Same old shit. <laughs> right, but it's a hey, di- but if you can get away with it. <laughs> you getting away with it, it's kind of sticking to your guns, really. Yeah, it? yeah, well, sticking to your principles, isn't it? Well, like I think you write a song, you... you it's a, what the song is about it's a lyric you know, yeah. it's, it's the lyric that changes not right. necessarily the sound so why are you saying something different now than you think you you know you have over the past few years you know, has um, things changed with time yeah. or with age or yeah I, I think I've always written about what affects me now I, was, I saw quite a good interview with John Lennon when he was doing his double fantasy album and I said to him what who are you writing for? And he said he kind of thought about it, and he thought, well, I'm not really writing for the kids who are kids mm. now, but I was writing for the people who were kids when I was a kid, yeah, yeah. and I'm kind of writing for people who's kind of grown with me. And yeah. I, th- I kind of think that's where I'm at, I yeah. suppose, really. I suppose you go, you know, your audience grows with you, don't they? Really, and I suppose that's what you want. Yeah, you or, d- really. or dwindles. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. <laughs> so, what kind of things inspire you? Just the things that are happening in your life, then? Is it really, or is it yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. political yeah. stuff? I mean, yeah, you know, it's hard to not. Do that. Um, no. I'm, I've never been an out and out political activist, although I'm no. aware of it. I think in this modern world you can't help but be touched by certain things that yeah. are going on in the world, but some things are a younger man's game to rail against. And yeah. I don't know, but then I've always seen myself as a, more of a traditional songwriter like Ray mm. Davis, you know, and mm. there's a real kind of human element with a twist mm. going on with him, and I mm. think that's where I'm at. I don't mm. know, but then you write a song because you, you write a song because you can't really explain in a kind of linear literary way what you want to express right. you know so kind of an idea comes and then otherwise you, you might as well write a letter to everybody well, well I suppose that's true actually you know like yeah. a song is, yeah. Yeah. but then, they, then you're posing a, a problem for yourself I'm a big fan of Jacques Brel and he said well I must he said what about songwriting somebody said to him he said well well I must be mad you know you've got to write a song that means something and each word and each line you've got like kind of three verses to say something in the chorus and you've got each 
verse has got four lines yeah. and maybe the chorus has got two. Yeah. He said, not only that, each word has got to have a, a rhythm to it, which is also going to be attached to a musical yeah. note. He said, yeah. oh, he said, I must it's a bit hard, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a challenge. Yeah, 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 it's a challenge. <laughs> Definitely. Brilliant. OK, then, so what's next for you, then, after this? Um, I, I think I'm off to do some acoustic shows in the States in... October. I'm yeah. off to Kiev. I've got a couple of things over there. I've got a couple of things coming up with this. I don't know, so what happens, yeah. but I'm beginning to start thinking and writing and doing another album's worth of stuff. So. Right, right. I don't know, so what happens. See what happens. Never really thought past the end of the week, but still don't. That's bloody good going there, wasn't it, really? I like that philosophy. I kind of managed to get by somehow. Yeah, somehow you managed to get by. I like that. All right. I'm going to leave you now because you've got to go. All you? right, yeah. Thank you very much for your time. You've been listening to Captain. To listen again to this and other tales, go to cattails.co.uk.